looking for magic cards at flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 and you also get automatically entered into the M20 booster box giveaway which runs until July 15th. Let's take a look at all the hydras we have access to here. All right, well, Hydroid Crace is being a Hydra. It's pretty good news. We've got the Bioessence Hydra to combo with some Planeswalkers. A Voracious Hydra, nice mana sink if we can ramp. Hungering Hydra, not the best, but uh, I guess another Hydra. And then Gargos. Six mana for an 8 7. Hydra spells cost four less to cast, so that's quite a discount. So it plays well alongside maybe Hydroid Crasis, alongside. A voracious Hydra. And whenever a creature you control becomes a target of a spell, Gargos finds up to one target creature you don't control. So yeah, pretty interesting uh, build around card. Of course, a six mana card that then still has to ramp you. It's kind of slow. It's kind of uh, vulnerable to sorcery speed removal if the opponent's on a more creatureless deck. So it's not going to be a groundbreaking deck here that we're trying to make, but it could be fun. So I'm guessing we want to start with four copies of uh, the legendary Gargos here, alongside all the Hydras, basically. I'm going to try and fit in four Hydroid Crisis and four Voracious Hydras, and then the rest of the deck is just going to be as many mana generators as possible to try and get us up to six mana in first place, and then cast those giants, Crisis and Voracious Hydras. And I think we've got like a couple approaches that we could take. One is maybe play Nikia, which can help us double all our mana when it comes to casting creatures. And of course the drawback doesn't really matter if we're not trying to play any non-creature spells. So that could be one approach. And the other one of course is Nissa, which is also pretty good when it comes to casting all these giant X spells in green. We could potentially play both, although, you know, I think we probably want to choose between either Nissa or Nikia. Nikia is a little bit easier to protect, as it's just a 5-5, can be attacked by creatures to take it out of commission, whereas Nissa can be potentially taken out more easily. But on the other hand, this doesn't make us splash into a third color, so it's going to make our mana base a bit smoother. And uh, yeah, Nissa is arguably just a more powerful card than Nikia. We can stick to just blue-green. And yeah, let's fill out this uh, deck real quick. So I've got all the Hydras we can possibly fit into the deck. Let's add some cheap mana ramp. I've got all the Druids here, Paradise Druid. Uh, I'm guessing we want Incubation Druid. And then I've got Growth Spiral as well. So we almost have a deck here. So let's see here. How about two copies of Cura and then two copies of Bioessence Hydra. And then I guess we've got 60 cards already. What do we think of this? So the Voracious Hydra can kind of fill out our curve wherever we want it to. Same with Hydroid Crisis, although they're mostly like four drops so I guess we can kind of sort our curve like this. This is a 6. So we've got turn 1 Lanner Elves. Turn 2 we've got 12 different 2 mana ramp cards. At 3 we have Kyora. At 4 we can potentially cast a Voracious Hydra for X equals 2 and a Hydroid Crisis X equals 2. And then at 5 we've got the Bioessence Hydra which is a nice follow up to a Kyora. We've got our Nissa, which can double up our mana. And then once we get Gargos in play and have any other Hydras in hand, we can get those out in play and uh, get them pretty big. Maybe we've got a few too many curve toppers here, so I could see potentially like shaving a few copies of Gargos or some of the other Hydras and uh, rely more on the Voracious Hydra and Hydroid Crisis to get us there. Cut one copy of Gargos and add one Cura, could definitely see that. So. Add a bit more ramp, shave a few of the curve toppers here. Even though we do want to build around Gargos, it is still legendary. 
and uh, it's still a six mana card so it doesn't have the flexibility that a card like voracious hydra or hydroid crisis have uh, icon advanced history not sure about that one we're trying to cast giant hydras that can usually win the game by themselves so giving them plus one plus one with the icon doesn't seem super impactful even though the ability to dig for hydras could be nice against the control decks but i don't think we'll need uh, the icon here so this seems okay Kira plays quite well with Bioessence Hydra. Gift of Paradise could be fine if we're trying to kind of diversify some of our ramp cards. Plays well with Kiora if we can untap it. We could also be playing Lotus Field. If we play Lotus Field that combines pretty nicely with Kiora herself. Untapping the Lotus Field to add 3 mana. Yeah, the only issue with Lotus Field is that it's not the best combo with Nissa who shakes the world. So there's a bit of tension there between the two planeswalkers. All right, so no Lotus Fields. Let's add a few dual lands here. Of course, Breeding Pool being a pretty nice one, counting as a forest for Nyssa. And a uh, couple Hinterland Harbors can't hurt. And then uh, plenty of basic forests. This gives us a total of 13 blue sources, which should be plenty for this uh, Growth Spiral and the Crasis and Bioessence Hydra on the splash. So yeah, this looks decent. I think this many 2-mana ramp cards is just kind of necessary when we're trying to play all these expensive cards. So I think this seems fine. And then of course Voracious Hydra doubles up as removal, as does Gargos. So despite being blue-green and not really playing any removal spells, we can still deal with opposing creatures if we have to. And then kind of just go over the top with Hydroid Crisis. And even the Bioessence Hydra great alongside Kiora and Nissa. So let's take a look at some nice basic lands for blue-green Hydras. This looks pretty Hydra-like. And now some forests. This looks pretty Hydra-like as well. Alright. Well, I think we've got our deck here. Hydra Tribal, let's give it a shot. We'll uh, keep this hand. And probably lead with this Incubation Druids. And we're just looking for more mana ramp. Lands will do fine as well. I guess we want to main phase this in case we draw another 2-drop. Next turn we can adapt the Incubation Druid. And then maybe start casting these Hydroid Crisis. And looks like we might be up against some sort of elemental gate hybrid deck. Cure's not bad. So we can adapt Incubation Druids and then still play Nissa or uh, Cure afterwards. And I don't think we need to untap the Incubation Druid here. I guess we could have attacked for three, that might have been worth it. So next turn we get to make 5 plus 6, 11 mana, potentially. So we could play Voracious Hydra for x equals 9, which if we double the plus 1 plus 1 counters will give us an 18, 19 Voracious Hydra. It's not bad. Well, make that even more now. Now we could also just go for the Hydroid Crisis instead. Not sure which we prefer. Putting just a giant Voracious Hydra in play is gonna make it very difficult for the opponent to deal with. Although, who knows, they're playing black as well. And a Field of the Dead. So, both options would be reasonable. So, Hydroid or Voracious. 
Yeah, let's go with a voracious. This is sweeter. So X equals 10. Draw a card from Kira. And we're gonna double the number of counters here. Ooh, by us and Sidra. This could be sweet as well with Kira in play. So we've got a 2021. I guess achievement unlocked already. Wanted to get a 2020 Hydra in play. And there we go. <laughs> and the opponent just has to scoop it up. Voracious Hydra, just too much for the opponent to handle. Alright, the sand seems fine. Try to ramp into an early Nissa and then double up this Voracious Hydra. Although the mono red deck is going to be able to deal with this incubation druid pretty handily. So we might have to play this Voracious Hydra pretty early on just to kind of put something in play. Want to make sure to play out our force as much as we can to make Nissa more powerful. So don't really want to play Voracious Hydra for X equals 1. Would give us access to a 2-3. Or we could like find this Firebrand. Alright, Potent just setting up with a Runaway Steamkin. Now Voracious Hydra for X equals 2 and then finding the Steamkin seems pretty appealing. So I think that's what I'm going to go with here. Take that uh, Steamkin out of commission before it gets out of hand. Now the Hydra won't be able to attack past the Electrostatic Field, but it's just kind of a, a nice blocker to have access to here, blocking the Firebrand, preventing any spectacle shenanigans. And then next turn we could maybe play Nissai for Incubation Druid still around, which then sets us up for this Voracious Hydra number 2, which is going to be quite a bit bigger than the first one. Alright, so they do have the shock on the Incubation Druids. They might have had it last turn, just, just decided to play the Steamkin first to try and get that a bit bigger and light up the stage. Thanks to Electrostatic Field enabling Spectacle, finds another copy of Runaway Steamkin. Alright, so traded some resources here. Sadly can't play Nissa, And I don't think I'm gonna play Voracious Hydra for X equals 2 here. Just gonna pass a turn. And then next turn try and play Nissa and protect her. So we can set up a giant Hydra. Still making sure to play our forests. There's no double blue cards we need to cast. So that's not a concern. Opponent just ships the turn back. Alright, I think it's Nissa time. Could also go for Hydra X equals 3. Which could be reasonable. I think we got a Nissa though. Could have also like decided to play an Islands. To untap with Nissa since Forest is a bit more valuable in case it ends up dying. And I'm not going to bother attacking here since they can just block with the field. So yeah, hopefully we don't lose our Nissa in this turn cycle and we can set up for a giant crisis next turn. Two cards in hand. They'll need some burn spells to grow the Steamkin and deal with our creatures. So we'll see. Alright, Shame Whirler plus the two Firebrands could maybe take out one of our three toughness creatures. If we have to chum block with the Voracious Hydra, I'm not too upset to do so. Interesting attack from this Firebrand. Not sure what this implies. 
but uh, I guess they might just want to use the other firebrand to finish off whatever we block with. I think we are happy to block with the Voracious Hydra. Alright. So, just a nice 2 for 1 for us. And, alright. We get to untap with a Nissa in play, so it's uh, time to go off here. Alright, so this is 13 mana in our pool. Could play Kiora first, I suppose, and then uh, still play Giant Hydroid Crisis. Yeah, this seems fine. And now it's X equals 10. So, I think I just want to kind of pad my life total here with the Hydroid Crisis. Seems good enough. And then got a discard to hand size. Guess an island can go. Alright, let's see how our opponent deals with a 10 10 Hydroid Crisis. And our two planeswalkers in play. We've got a Bioessence Hydra just waiting in the wings here, which plays great with our two planeswalkers. And yeah, Poon just has to pack it in. And we're on the draw with a pretty solid opening hand. Potential turn 1 Lanarels, turn 2 Kiora, and uh, turn 3 Nissa. Let's see if they have some interaction up against Esper. Are we going to see a Thought Erasure? No, a Lazav instead. And something interesting to note is that on turn 1, when our opponent played the Tapped Water Grave, they had a slight pause, maybe indicating that they're holding a 0 mana artifact that they didn't want to play for 0. And yeah, we see a Militia Bugler go to the graveyard, so it looks like our opponent's on the Tishar combo deck which uh, features Chamber Sentry as an artifact that they could have potentially played for zero mana, but of course decided not to. Alright, so I think it's time to deploy Kiora. And then we can uh, use Kiora to ramp out Nissan next turn, potentially. No point in untapping Lanor Elves. Might as well just take one from Lazav. Do I think Rina pauses too much to give information away? Yeah, I mean, there's some things you have to get used to, like the turn one shocks are usually pretty obvious. And in this case, the zero mana artifacts. So if you're playing a deck featuring those cards, just make sure to pass a turn quickly and you can maybe disguise that information. All right, well, I think it's uh, Nissa time here. I guess we want to probably untap our forest in case they somehow do have removal. But if they had an answer for this Lunar Elves, probably would have seen it already. And I don't think we want to untap our forest since we don't really have any use for the double green this turn. So might as well untap our island, which is less valuable. And turn that into a 3 3. Rise, my friend. And then next turn we can go digging with these gross spirals and maybe find a Hydra. Do I think Vampires will finally be a tier 1 deck? Yeah, it's definitely possible that Vampires will be one of the contenders. Saw some other players do pretty well with it recently. Huey Jensen reaching uh, number one mythic briefly, playing vampires. So the deck definitely has potential. 
We'll have to wait and see how the standard metagame develops. Militia Bugler misses, so not what our opponent wanted to see. And a Breeding Pool, pretty great pickup alongside Nissa, counting as a forest we can make both blue and green mana with. So let's start by probably just casting this Growth Spiral. I guess we don't quite need double green. Yeah, sure, let's stab this Lanner Elves, why not? Ooh, and there's our Hydra, so let's put this Breeding Pool into play untapped. Now we can make quite a bit of mana. Also want to think about attacking first, although I don't really want to trade this island for like a bugler. So yeah, let's just uh, do some tapping and untapping. Kyura can untap a land as well. So we've got six mana floating, we can add three more mana, so we could have a Voracious Hydra for X equals um, seven here, which could take out one of their creatures, although they don't really have any combo creatures in play, there's no Tashar, there's no um, Diligent Excavator that we need to deal with, there's no Rona, so I'm not even sure we need to fight with this Voracious Hydra, we might be better off just making it big. Yeah, let's make it big. Otherwise, we would probably be killing Lazaf, which could potentially copy one of those cards we mentioned. And that might be the safer play, just killing Lazaf. But just putting a lot of pressure on the opponent is also nice. So let's go for it. X equals 7. And we're going to make it a 14-15, drawing a card with Kyura. Seems reasonable to me. And we still haven't played a forest since we put the breeding pool in play with the growth spiral. Alright, so not a bad turn. Let's see how our opponent deals with our Hydra. Alright, there's a diligent excavator, so step one of the combo. Mox Amber to add one mana. Mills over to Shar. So next turn, this Lazav could potentially copy Tishar. Ooh. So the Salvager of Rune here, the addition from M20, which can get back a permanent that was put there from the battlefield. So we suspect they have... Well, I guess turn one when our opponent had a pause, it might have also been the Mox Amber instead of the Chamber Sentry that they had in hand, so they don't necessarily have the Chamber Sentry in hand as well. So we just need to try and close out the game as soon as possible, which means we want to start by digging with this Grow Spiral. Put a Forest in play. We'll Grow Spiral again. Not uh, Hydra we were hoping to draw here. Alright, well I guess we'll just go on the B-Town plan. Turn this island into a 3-3 since our forests are more valuable. And send in everyone. And hope their opponent doesn't combo us next turn. They will be forced to make a few blocks, but they might be able to save their more important creatures, like the Excavator. Because, yeah, Lazav can just turn into a Tashar next turn, which sends up the combo. So the decision of not killing Lazav with the Voracious Hydra earlier and making the Hydra bigger could come back to bite us here. But, you know, sometimes you just gotta make a 14-15 Voracious Hydra. And at least it is forcing maybe some awkward chum blocks that otherwise wouldn't have happened. As we see Salvager of Ruin chum blocking as well. It's going to leave Lazav and a diligent excavator on the opponent's side. 
and yeah we're just gonna have to play this druids couldn't have voracious hydra don't think that's necessary and just pass the turn but uh, there's a good chance that we're dead Lazav can turn into Tishar, and then if her opponent has one of those cheap artifacts to get the chain going, if they have Chamber Sentry, can get back Salvager of Ruin, Salvager of Ruin gets back Chamber Sentry, and then they can just mill us out with the Diligent Excavator. So let's see if they have the Chamber Sentry here. It's going to be another Mox Amber instead, which also does a trick here. Although I guess they still need another artifact to loop back. Although, let's see, does this work? I guess this works as well. They can just loop Mox Amber and Salvager of Ruin, since the Mox Amber will be sacrificed to the legendary rule. So I'm pretty sure we're dead here. So Mox Amber goes to the graveyard. Salvager can get sacrificed to return the Mox Amber from the graveyard back to the battlefields or back into hand and then on the battlefield. And with each iteration of the loop, our opponent gets to mill us for two with the Dillinger Excavator. And, yep, that's pretty much the loop here. I had a gut feeling that we probably should have killed Lazav with the Voracious Hydra. And kind of got punished for not doing so. But on the bright side, we got to see the Tishar deck featuring Salvager of Ruin combo off here. We're not going to make our opponent go through the entire combo here, since as soon as they mill our entire deck and we take a draw stuff for the turn, we're going to be dead. We don't get a chance to really interact in any significant way. And we don't want to waste anyone's time. So yeah, good game's opponents. And we'll move on to the next one. Alright, so we're on the play with a decent opening hand, although maybe a bit too heavy on the Hydras this time around. Although at the very least we've got uh, turn 2 Paradise Druid. Alright, the rest is gonna brick. And another Paradise Druid's not a bad pickup. So we just want to find more mana sources, basically. A lance would be fine. More ramp creatures are okay. Island will do just fine. So, interesting spots. We could play Crasis for X equals uh, 2 here, although that's not too exciting. Don't even think I'm attacking with the Paradise Roots since I don't want to have it killed by any instant speed removal. So I think I'm just going to play another Paradise Druid, hope we dodge Cry of the Carnarium, and then set up for a bigger Hydra next turn. Maybe just go for Bioessence Hydra first here, we'll see. Right, it's gonna be a Midnight Reaper, that's fine, and ooh, Gargos. So we're getting close, need one more land before we can cast the Vicious Watcher. In the meantime, I guess we could play Hydro Crisis for X equals 3 and draw a card, or we could play Voracious Hydra for X equals 3, which will come into play as a 3-4, which can fight the Midnight Reaper and survive, which seems pretty sweet as well. Yeah, let's go with the Voracious Hydra here. Opponent does get to draw a card. But we do get to add a 3-4 to the board. Now 4 mana. Of course, Ritual of Soot would be pretty back-breaking as it still kills our Voracious Hydra as well as the Paradise Druids. 
So that's a card we don't want to see. But it's just going to be a cast down on the Paradise Druid instead. And an Ors of Enforcer, pretty good against our Hydra. Alright, so I guess for now we'll just play a Bio Essence Hydra past the turn. Could also offer the trade here, just so that future Hydras can maybe survive the Death Toucher. Don't hate it. Should have attacked before playing our land here. And since our deck only really deals with the Enforcer by fighting it with a Voracious Hydra, we might as well just trade this off so that future bigger trampling Hydras don't have to deal with the annoying Death Toucher. Alright, another Ors of Enforcer. And the rest, well, bad news for the opponents. We still didn't pick up any non-creature spells here. Alright, well, looks like it's finally time to deploy Gargos. We've waited long enough. And if Gargos survives... Does survive cast down, for example. Next turn we get to play a pretty huge Hydroid Crisis. I think I'll stay back with the Bioessence Hydra for now. Although it would be reasonable to try and trade it off for the Enforcer as well. Just kind of feels bad. Karn can give them a basic Swamp. But next turn we know about Contempts. That could deal with Gargos. Alright, so Gargos makes Hydras cost 4 less, so this Hydra Crisis basically gets to be cast for 4 additional mana for free. So let's do a quick count here. X equals 5 plus 2 or plus 4. X equals 9 here. It's not bad. Let's just double check our math. So I've got 6, 7, plus 4 is 11, minus 2 is 9. Yeah, that seems good to me. And... Yeah, don't really want to attack still, I don't think. So just pass a turn. Opponent can contempt the Gargoyles if they want to. But we've got plenty of backup here with Nissa doubling our mana. Almost... And two more copies of Hydroid Crisis to refuel. And we see a third duress. The third duress finally hits one of our planeswalkers here. So I guess a third time's a charm. Still not too upset. And Gargos gets to, I guess, fight this Ors of Enforcer on its way out. So we still got a bit of value. <laughs> well, I'm not sure why they're bothering casting this duress. And their opponent's just gonna scoop it up. Well, you know, duress can be a good card in some matchups. It's not amazing against us, and the fourth copy especially is uh, not going to be too useful. So I guess uh, opponent got a bit unlucky to draw all four here. But yeah, Gargos got to see him in action here and definitely put in some work, letting us cast a bigger Hydroid Crisis and also taking out that uh, Death Touch creature on the way out after soaking up a removal spell. So Hydra Tribal definitely seems to be working quite well here. Let's see if we can maybe get another game in. Alright, we're on the draw with decent start here. Some mana dorks into a voracious Hydra. And looks like Turn 1 Duress is the name of the game. Takes away that growth spiral. It's not too bad. And uh, Gargos waiting in the wings. Although I thought Erasure is going to maybe mess with that plan. So against a discard-heavy control deck, Hydroid Crisis is probably our best friend, helping us refuel. Our Planeswalkers are great. 
let's see what they decide to take. They could slow down their mana development and take Paradise Root or take one of the payoffs. They decide to go with the Voracious Hydra. And we're just gonna run out the Paradise Root. And attack for one. Can't quite cast Gargos next turn, but we're getting close. Narset part of Veils. Which I'll happily attack here with both Romana Dorks. Oath of Kaya threatens to kill a Paradise Root, but now we can play both Mana Dorks. Hope to dodge a Sweeper effect. Kaya's Wrath could definitely be a thing. Um, I don't think we have much of a choice, though. I won't forget our time together. So we're all in here. Opponent can Oath of Kaya to kill the tapped Paradise Druid. Still leaves us with 6 mana for Gargos, which our opponent knows about. And then we gotta hope to top deck some Hydras. And this I would be pretty good too. So, no Kaya's Wrath is my guess. Otherwise we probably would have seen that put on the stack already. Still unclear whether the opponent's on the more controlling version of Asper or the more mid-range version with Hero. Could still be either one. It's going to be a tap to Watery Grave into Oath of Kaya, targeting Paradise Druid. Alright. Well, let's see how they deal with Gargos. We can even get an attack for two with the Paradise Druid here, which seems worth it. Although I'm sure that the Asper deck has plenty of ways of dealing with Gargos before he does too much damage. Another Oath of Kaya on the Paradise Druid. So... Gargos does get to get an attack in here for a total of 10 damage alongside the Lanner Elves. So, the reason to keep land in hand is if our opponent has another Thought Erasure, they might fire it off instead of doing something else. Reason to play it out is if our opponent has like a Basilica Bell Haunt making us discard a card. We would rather have this breeding pool in play. I think I'll play it out. So we'll see. Five mana is this big Teferi. They didn't have a great answer for Gargos last turn. Let's see if five mana maybe gives them a better answer. Let's lead with Gross Spiral, since if we draw Nissa, we could still make a hasty 3-3. Right, Voracious Hydra, it's not bad. I think I want to cast that right now, in case your opponent somehow is sandbagging a removal spell for Gargos. We get to make use of that mana discount right away. So let's do a quick count here. 5 plus 4 is 9, so x equals 7. So we can make a 14-15 Voracious Hydra. Could be okay. Do we maybe want to chip in with the Lanner Elves instead? Yeah, it could be worth it to attack with the Lanner Elves instead of sinking more mana into the Voracious Hydra. So I think I'm going to split the difference here. And just attack with the one Lanner Elves. And then this Voracious Hydra will be for x equals 6, which still gives us a 12-13, which is still lethal by itself, technically speaking. So, x equals 6. And we'll attack for 9. Cast down on the Voracious Hydra. Alright. Cast down unable to deal with Gargos. So we still get 9 points of damage in, which means that if our opponent falls to 2, both Lanner Elves will still be lethal even if they somehow deal with Gargos. So that's another reason to at least attack with one of the two Lanner Elves here. So let's see if our opponent can get their way out of this. And no, opponent just has to scoop it up. Well, Gargos being a legendary creature came in handy here, as our opponent might have been stuck with a couple cast downs in hand. Well, that was sweet. We got some pretty excellent games in with our blue-green Hydra deck. 
And uh, yeah, not bad for kind of our first crack at the deck. And to be honest, the build is pretty straightforward. Lots of four offs, just not the full amount of Cura, which is not necessarily great in multiples. And Bio Essence Hydra, which is also more of a fun off in combination with our two Planeswalkers. And Gargos being legendary makes sense not to play the full four. But yeah, pretty happy with uh, where we ended up here. I thought this deck was going to be kind of a meme, but to be honest, we also have a pretty solid base that's already has a kind of a proven track record here with all these mana creatures and Nissa. Doesn't take much to have a, a good deck, especially with Hydroid Crisis just being a great card by itself, and Voracious Hydra also being surprisingly effective here. All right, so that was Hydra Tribal. Not bad, not bad. So yeah, that's going to be it for me today. I want to thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.